do the next set. Yeah, I'm not bad. Let me back here. There's a center person. <laughs>
set our thinking. This is like coming home. I'll sit kind of prepare myself to the prodigal son. Be this is Bethlehem. I love all the time and I always love her. But I've been in Bethlehem so long and I have for one that was so beautiful. Uh, it's just a play with a moment of Be among you once again. I'm sitting here listening to that choir. I believe in my Good singing we've been listening to and the good work from the young brother brother Tony. It's been wonderful. This is the way you spent more of it. I think we spent family life a part of it. I've known Brother Ed for years, we moved together, didn't know some of the rest of the family, but family died with Christ. Morning, we not take a lot of time. My brother Norman here. I haven't heard him in a while. We want to give him plenty of time. He was telling me his sickness, and I'm really sorry to hear that. Brother Bruce, bad from this sickness. That's part of life. But what we may suffer down here is nothing to be comparable to the glory of God. Uh, so the creature may be subject to bad people, subject to all the sicknesses that can come up on it, but we have a, a better place to go. We have a hope down in our lives that keeps us walking as we can sing in there about the valleys and the mountains. The hope that we have strengthens us to walk through these valleys and up these mountains. Now for just a little bit, I want to talk a little bit from the 14th chapter of John. Christ speaking there and not holding all of us in. I go to prepare a place, and if I go, I will come again and receive you like myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, he's speaking here of going to open the kingdom. Now, the kingdom of heaven was prepared from the foundation of the world. You can read in Matthew 25, where all of them were gathered together before him. All nations, and he separated them as the shepherd divided the sheep from the goat. He said to them on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom which is inherited from you from the foundation of the world. So the kingdom was prepared. It was set up in the mind of God, and it was waiting there. Then we find that God took Syrian by the name of Abraham led him over into the land of Canaan multiplied his seed separated the Gentile world these that was born in Abraham's house bought with his money became known as the Israelite nation the Gentile world the rest of it over here walking in darkness the Bible says, at the time you were without God being alien to the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now this is the Gentile world. The Israelite nation is sitting up at night with the blessings of God at home, all the sacrifices to offer, but not one of those sacrifices was acceptable to God to the extent that it could remove sin. It could only stay it for 12 months and then there was remembrance to make it again. The 
man, the Bible speaks of man. What is man? Thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. Then the prophet spoke of this, O David, and said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers have taken counsel against the God and against his anointing, saying, Let us break his band asunder and cast away his horns from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, he shall have them in the right. Yea, have I set my holy king on my hill of Zion. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Now here, he's a speaking of Christ to coming into the world, and how the heathen or the people over here with the Gentile world would put him to death, and how the king, the Pharisees, would take counsel against him. This is in God's plan. David spoke again and he said, They shall look upon him whom they have pierced. Then again he said, They parted my cash lots for my raiment. Now, looking at this, we see that the plan of God included the Gentile world to bring them in. Now, but there was no one worthy to open the book as we look in Revelation over here. I went the book card with the seals on it. There was no one worthy. I to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. I it was took something better than the blood of animals to open up this great kingdom. I, I for men and women, as he was speaking there a while ago in the prayer, I to be born again, to be changed. I, I to take away the stony heart and to give them a heart of flesh and to make them worthy of this great thing, this great salvation how, how that God was going to send down and extend it out into the entire world. How, how then we look again here in your death, how, how roaming through the world and claiming the lovers and the families, how, how separating them and now they're going down into the dust of the earth how, with no hope how, of coming out. How, how no man had ever rose from the dead. How, even Job, the great prophet, looked at it and he said, when a few days or cut a few years then I shall go away a which I shall not return a Job looked at death as he is but then we look again and Job got another revelation and he said I know that my Redeemer left and that in the latter days he shall stand upon the earth the kingdom of God I was set up back here at the foundation of the earth world but no man could get into it. They was types and figures of it by the law. All of them was holding to a better day. What was it the old prophet said? While the path of the righteous shine unto a brighter day. As 
I've been put to death and rise again the third day. Well, when the time come, I went back to the Son of Man and hung him on the cross of Calvary. Well, the sun refused to shine. This was the one, a brother Norman, that created the back there. The Bible said all things were created by him. And without him was not anything made that was made.
glorify God in your life. We are required of God to be obedient. We are required of God to praise Him with our lips. We are required of God to praise Him down on the inside, like the young brother said this morning, and maybe Brother Richard also. It gets sweeter all the time. Now, my Brother Richard, I know that I'm near home, but I'm longing to go. I love my family and love to stay here. But when crossing time comes, yeah. I love that song. How sweet it's going to be when crossing time comes. I don't know exactly what I'll speak. We know that we have passed from death unto life. There's a great difference in death and in life. And by the grace of God and by the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the knowledge to know that we have faith from death unto life because we love the brethren. What are you talking about, Brother George, Brother Ray, Brother Mark? No, we're talking about the body of Christ. If you please. We know that in our earthly house of this tabernacle, word is all, we have a building for God. A house eternal, not made with hands, not like the old building that stood down there that they labored on and built. But this one was built without hands. Therefore, it is a faith. It is a hope. In this earth and I spoke a few moments ago that they need the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that it was first spoken to, they heard. But it wasn't mixed with faith. The word that they heard was not mixed with faith. It was possible that God blinded their eyes. You see, we get into so many things that we don't do justice to any of them. But I want to speak of the faith that we have today. At this present moment, 1993. The faith of Jesus Christ. It's not way off someplace. It doesn't belong to the old Baptist family. It doesn't belong to the other families of this world that we are, uh, speak about. But it belongs to those that have been down to the fountain. And I say you have to been down to drink from that fountain too. You got to get down to where God was going to require you to get. Uh, when was he standing in the song? When he was on his knees. Uh, he was taller than when he was standing up, brother, in my eyes. The faith, the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? That God was in Christ, reconciling who? The world. I guess the world thinks that the church thinks that they are not wanted, but we want the world. Christ did. We want the world to come. We want the world to come and sit in the congregation. That they might hear the word of God. That they might understand what Jesus did. We were a people. We were without God in the world. Brother Richard has done told us. But God had us in mind. God had a plan, Brother Richard, that was going to bring whosoever will. Let him come. I don't care what color your skin is, what color your name is, but this one might bring in the mind of God. God loved everybody. He isn't like us. God is a God that loves 
free man and woman. And when he walked on Calvary's cross almost 2,000 years ago, he died for everyone's sin. <coughs> Not just a certain few or a group of people, but for the sin of the world. That included every sin that had ever been committed or ever would be committed. Well, if he did that, why isn't everybody saved? If Christ took our sin, everybody's sin, nailed them on the cross, and that's what we believe. Yes. Why isn't everybody saved? It is because that they do not have faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the blood that flowed through His veins that God set forth. Uh, who did? God set it forth. A propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sin. <coughs> How do I get them remitted? Faith in the blood that God set forth and faith that in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I quote in the scripture the last three or four times I took the stand. And I saw it long ago when Brother Richard was so wonderfully preaching by the Spirit. He wasn't. God was just using him. No man can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care how much education you might have or how little you might have, you cannot preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without His Spirit. Here I thought God's puts to. What does it take to be saved? Well, my friend, listen. The knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, understanding by the love of God. Now we can't leave that out. If you leave that out, you left out the main ingredient. The love of God that he had and placed in that body that God prepared for the dwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ. The old scripture says, the new scripture says, A body has thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin that I had no pleasure. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Back in the Old Testament, what he's talking about by the promises of God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me to do thy will, O God. And he taketh away the first that he might establish this great covenant. The dispensation of time been fulfilled. We're living in the last covenant that God is going to give to the human family. The grace covenant. What do you mean by grace? I said I was going to quote a scripture somewhere in the old book. The prophecy of God of the Spirit of God moved with the man and he said I saw mercy and truth come together. Listen to what I'm saying. Mercy and truth came together. Well, we can speak on mercy. We can speak on truth. I am the way, the truth. It hadn't come before, Brother George. Now, now the truth of God is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now my friend, listen. And listen what the book said also. Now, now that righteousness and peace kissed each other. Oh, that we might understand what he's talking about. Yes. Oh, that we might understand how when mercy and truth came together, uh, uh, my friends and, and righteousness and peace that uh, uh, kissed each other uh, uh, the grace of God that uh, uh, went into effect. So many things took place. Now you see one thing leads to another. I want to read some before I quit. Great comfort. When I get troubled, when I get down, you know where I go? I go to the book. I get more comfort.
comfort out of the scriptures that God left the road map, if you please, that leads from here to heaven. If you don't follow the road map, you'll be like a man on the highway. He won't know which road to take. I've seen it many times, sitting at the fork of the road, looking at the road map. Don't wait to that. Plan it before you get there. Know which road to take, my friends. The Lord Jesus Christ suffered on Calvary in the mind of God. He stood in the land slain uh, uh, from before the foundation of the world. I have it in the dispensation of time. I pray was fulfilled. Truth has come. Peace has come. The only place you're going to find lasting peace is in the church of the living God at the pillar of the ground of the truth. Give up on God's foot's too. My peace I give unto thee. My peace I leave with thee. No place else to get it other than in the old church. This other is just temporary. But this is it. God's plan's not over. No, this is my friends, the grace of God that He brought salvation to every individual. If they will have faith in Him, if they will believe in their heart that He went to Calvary, that is on your part, my friends, uh, that is to possess the faith uh, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Think about these things. Why is the dead? Why are you then baptized for the dead? It's not talking about me going out and being baptized for Uncle So-and-so. That's not what he means. Why was I baptized? Because I had faith in the operation of God. That's how that he wrote in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus got up from the dead by the power of God. That he's alive today. This is the reason I think he looked back at the sisters or at the children uh, when he was walking up Calvary's mountain and said, Don't weep for me, <coughs> but rather weep for yourselves and your children. For this cause came I into the world, to this end was I born. Oh, listen, my friend, who for the joy that was set before him I endured the cross and despised the shame thereof and he looked beyond the grave and saw the resurrection. I'm going to get up. You turn down this tabernacle and I'll raise it up again. Amen. Speaking of this tabernacle, they thought he was talking about the building. Well, listen, children, just as true as he said he would get up from the grave. I, and he said, I go back to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming again. Oh, yeah. Just as true as he got up from the grave, he's going to come again. We've got proof of it. <laughs> we don't have to go out and listen to other men's theories. We've got it written down in the book, Brother George. Amen. What's going to take place? Yes. Our problem is, mine, is I don't put my head in there enough. In this book that I have in front of me, the promises of God are going to be fulfilled. When he opened up the sixth seal in the book of Revelation, I not go through much of it because I can't remember it. But I know there was twelve thousand out of each tribe of Israel. How uh, that was down in the presence of God. A hundred and forty and four thousand, uh, if you please, uh, I was there in the presence of God. Where? The 
But there was 144,000 that got up, my friends, uh, out of the grave. These were men that had not defiled themselves with women. They were a special breed, if you please. And it also takes a special breed today. I may be not ready to keep at it, but listen, my friend. He said after that 140 and 4,000, that I was a great multitude. Norman's included in that bus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. 
somebody else that you're not going to go. That's right. Children, this is the most important thing in your lives. Amen. You'll say, well, mom and daddy is right now, my wife is right now, but what little I possess is right now, no sir. The most important thing in life is whether you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I told you it doesn't take care of everybody's sin. The only one that's going to get the benefit of it is those that have faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All of these things in Revelation I hardly ever read there, but I got over there this morning. And I saw Norman Abbey getting there. I saw God giving him a rule. And I heard him saying how <laughs> Well, bless God, I'm gonna sing over there, but I'm gonna sing here too. Amen. I'm gonna shout hallelujah down here too. Amen. I want to give God the praise and the glory and the honor for saving the creatures such as you have before you today. Creature, yes. That's all he is. I've seen men in this world that look high and mighty. But listen, children, the biggest man that I ever saw was the man that humbled himself down under the mighty hand of God Amen. and was walked in humility. Yeah. Here are all God's good And he's also the prettiest man I ever saw. And the prettiest woman I ever saw was a righteous woman. Amen. I don't look at the outward appearance too much. But I do try to look down at the hidden man of the heart. The woman with the hidden man of the heart, that's what the book says. <coughs> Do you read your title clear? Can you look by my faith and see the Lord Jesus Christ coming on the cloud of glory? He's coming, children. And I want you to be ready when He comes. I want preparations made this side of judgment. It will be too late to go up before God in judgment and there try to make things right. We're gonna, I'm going to ask each of you that are here today to be like the old king was uh, when was it Nathan that went down and said, set your house in order. Isaiah said, set your house in order or you're going to die and not live. Amen. I want to ask each of you that are here today to set your house in order. Is it left up to you? Yes, it is. I can't do it for you. I, your mom and dad can't do it for you. I, your next door neighbor can't. I, but it's an individual matter between you and God. And God's done already moved as far as he's going to go. The God that I know is not a partial God. He's not going to go a little farther for Norman Agnes than it does for Brother Richard. We are required of God to have the faith of Jesus Christ. And then you can please God. Then you can give God the glory for your being here upon God's footstool. We'll not get down. There was another seal that was open and there was a silence in heaven. They had done shouting, it looks to me like. They'd already made it home. They had the palms of victory. They had the robe of righteousness on. And let me counsel you. I, I, that when they got that white robe, I, I, there was not a wrinkle or a blemish. Or 
hear and believe You are not delayed He promised to receive you To make the start today I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do Was when I laid off the old Put on the new. We want the choir to come and sing. The church doors is open. Been open now for almost 2,000 years. But when the mediator of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, stepped down between God and man, then the doors will be closed. Yes. It will be too late for you to get on the inside. Today is the day of salvation. Heart, not your heart. The heart of man must be changed by the word of God. So if they want to go here and want to unite with the church, come out and let it be known while they sing this song. Or if there's someone here that says, Church, I want you to remember me when you pray, come down and let it be known.